Я приветствую вас, дорогие друзья. Hello, everyone. You're watching Colors of Asia in today's program. A magical sound of folk instruments. In one of the previous programs, we told you about some of the folk musical instruments of Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan and Tajikistan. After those programs, we have received pleasant feedback from you, with wishes to come back to this topic again, because the world of musical instruments of Asia is so rich and diverse that it's hard to cover all of them within one episode. Of course, any resident of Kazakhstan will agree that Dombra is the queen of Kazakh national instruments. But then the question is, who is the king? And a disputable fact that it's an amazing invention called kobus, string musical instrument. We will talk about the kokobus, which until the end of the 60s of the last century was almost lost to humanity, because in Soviet ideology, the instrument on which the shamans played was considered to be an unfortunate example. Accordingly, it was absolutely unacceptable to promote this kind of art. But there were people who didn't agree with this idea and against all odds revived this great heritage of the Kazakh people. Our creative team was lucky enough to attend the rehearsal of the famous ethnoband Tengri. Its leader, Yerlan Sabitov, is a musician with experience and perhaps one of the strongest kobus players in the world. In 1966, he, a boy from the village, enrolled in a specialized music school named after Kolaj Basitova in Almaty. At the time, the director of the school was honored work of culture, honored teacher Tizikbaev Desimjan Kuzenovich. He was a teacher of seven girls, and I was the only boy who graduated from the class of Kubus. During a conversation with Yerlan Sabitov, it was curious to know how the instrument which he plays differs from other types of Kubus. There are many varieties of kobus, for example, prima kobus or alto kobus. It's the same as the alto violin. There is a bass kobus. It's the same as a cello. And there are cool kobus. I have three or four instruments. This instrument, for example, is universal. It's for studio recordings and concert performances. And this instrument is more suitable for studio. It has been suggested that the violin originated from Kokobus, and here there are a lot of differences from other instruments. Not every instrument can imitate, for example, a howl of a wolf, a barking of a dog, or, for example, the sounds of birds. Not any instrument. You can do something similar in this, but it's very difficult. And then you have to play with your fingernails. I'll show you a swan call now. And now I'll show you a bark of a dog. A howl of a wolf. After the death of after the death of Korkut, this instrument came to us thanks to the shamans. In general, not a single Korkut's key on the Kulkubus reached us entirely. Because one shaman played one phrase, the other played another phrase. In 1961, folk performer Daulet Maktabayev, who did not know the notes, trained Japas Kalimbayev, after which everything went on. 
And then, when Japas Kalambayev began to play, in 1966, they opened a Kobes class at the conservatory. Kokobus looks like a lightweight instrument, therefore the process of its manufacturing probably does not seem difficult. However, this is far from truth. At the same place where Kirkut died, there were trees called silverberry. It takes a long time to get moisture out of it, and this is a very solid tree. The instrument is made for 25 years, that is, one instrument, because the tree must dry naturally, and not just put on the radiator, or how these dombers are made now. Only after that, real masters, I want to emphasize this, begin to sharpen and make an instrument, and the skin should be of a young fowl, and the strings of the bow must be made of a fowl's hair between the age of two to four years old, because their hair is thin. And if you take a hair from an older animal, then the hair will be thin at the root, and higher you get, it will become thicker, and the sound will be different. The creative path of Yerlan Sabitov is interesting in its own way. He recalls with great excitement and awe many moments of his life, because every episode in it is a whole story worthy of an entire book. In 1986, the folklorist, ethnographer, minister of culture of the Republic, Osbika Lijanibekov, created under the Almaty Regional Philharmonic folk ethnographic ensemble, Adrna. He did not look for musicians from the conservatory. There were people who sang terme, some people played kobas. And once there was a competition of akuns, and I played the kolkobas. And the minister said to me, please stay. And I was young, I was 26 years old. Don't go, I need you. And we were the one to engage with the folklore. I dedicated myself to the folklore, looking for Asian performers. I remember buying a big, heavy tape recorder Yauza, and I traveled to the Turgai, Kazalorda regions, stood at some stops, looked for performers. I was holding a backpack over the shoulder and Yauza tape recorder in my hands and I came to record artists. It happened that I had to spend nights at the train stations. Today, Yerlan's main occupation is work in the ethnographic trio Tengri. The concerts of the band of Road are always sold out entirely. People come to enjoy beautiful Kazakh musical color. But the band itself was created by accident in one of the creative expeditions where Irlan Sabitov, rock singer Asim Kopaeva, and Dombra player Abu Khair Abdrash met. In fact, the band was created in a natural way. Driving in the car, we created a band. We came to the place, rehearsed there, performed on the spot. It happened that we sometimes forgot some parts. Then we came and rehearsed again. When we saw the tears of Russian Kazakhs, Mongolian Kazakhs, Kazakhs from Altai, then returning home, I told Asim, I'm not forcing you to leave rock style. We can sing rock. But time is passing by. I thought I'd be young all my life. But I'm getting older. And one day, I will have to say goodbye to the stage. But there will be time when you will have to say goodbye to rock music. You're an art person. You have shaman ancestors. That's why you can do it. Sing. When Yerlan first performed some compositions at our first rehearsal, I burst into tears. It was like a catharsis. When I hear the sounds, something turns over inside me. 
I feel the smell of the steppe, the smell of my own village. When I close my eyes, I imagine how nomads are riding the horses, the yurts, the smell of kumis, khazan, the smell of wormwood. A few months ago, the Dombra player Abu Khairab Trash left the band and he was replaced by Zaure Tabakova, who easily joined the band and mastered its entire repertoire. We probably feel each other's rhythm, a musical part. Therefore, nothing is divided here. Everything is common. Another project of Yelan Sabitov was born completely by chance, and this accident gives him a lot of positive emotions and the understanding that his work is only for the good. After the concert, a woman came to me. She was far from young, and she said, Play so good. What a sound. Could you teach me? I looked at her and thought, I am not the one who she should ask. Then I said to her, I am a Kulkobus player. She said, Yes, you are the right person, I should ask. Are you a Kulkobus player? And I continued, let's start with the fact that you're Russian and this is a Kazakh instrument. Do you understand that? And she said, I want to try. And to my surprise and happiness, he said yes, and we started to study. And the more I practiced, the more I realized that despite the seemingly simple instrument, it's very difficult to play. First of all, because when we play, we don't play with our finger pads, we play with this part, which is our fingernails, the insensitive part of our hands. She's fine with sense of pitch and rhythm, it's all right. A love for this aspect struck me most. And then she's a workaholic. When I show her one passage, and she will come tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, and in two days, and she will be studying this one passage until it's fully learned. It's hard to connect the left hand to the right hand. There must be synchronicity. It happens when you think the bow is too short, and if it were longer, then I would play it. And on this small bow, you need to fit the whole melody, you know? The main thing is to connect the left and right hemispheres, so that everything synchronously turns into some kind of melody. Well, the difficult thing is, is that there are no notes written here. Let's say the piano has black and white keys, and there is practically nothing here. A little move of the finger, and there is another note. This is all you need to hear, feel live with this instrument, be with it as a whole, weave into it. Kobus is still an individual instrument. I really hope that I'm the discoverer for someone. And that people of a different nationality will try to learn to play this instrument. I hope I've made a contribution. If I inspire someone with my action, I will be happy. Now I want you to take a trip to Azerbaijan, a country that is rightfully proud of the rich musical heritage of its ancestors. So there is a wonderful musician in Baku whose work and creativity are admired everywhere he performs. Percussion musical instruments are found in many nations and each of them has its own characteristics. Nagara is the pride of Azerbaijan. Several types of this drum are common in the country and they differ in size. Natik Sharinov is a famous musician. He is known as one of the virtuoso players of Nagara. By the way, Natik himself created over 10 types of this instrument, and each of them has its own original sound. A few years ago, Natik opened a specialized music school rhythm, where his band works successfully. Natik Sharinov is also known to a wide audience for the fact that his band performed at the opening and closing ceremonies of the Eurovision 2012. In addition, the musicians opened a concert of the singer Rihanna in the capital of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan Nagarasu from 1993 to 2000, Azerbaijani Nagora experienced bad times, 
They even said its place was in the museum, all because the other people's percussion instruments and synthesizers were used. I started to show the opposite. I saw that the national heritage could be lost. The gara is an instrument of Azerbaijani musical art. After, let's say, good promotion of Nagara, after the thousands, hundreds of students became interested in this instrument. And today, they come to learn how to play it. That makes me happy. Now we are in the school that I organized a few years ago. This is our kind of rhythmic world. I don't think I can live without the rhythm, without Nagara. He remembers how in 1982, when he was seven years old, he came to the Baku House of Pioneers and signed up for the band of Azir Aliyev, a famous musician, teacher, a person who was the first to create a musical score for Nagara and thereby opened the way for other musicians. After listening to The Boy, Azir immediately transferred him to the third grade and noted that Natik could have a great and successful future if he devoted himself to this art. In this musical class, the young musician learned notes and began to perform many different compositions, and after many years, newspapers began to write about him as follows. Natik Shirinov made a significant contribution to Azerbaijani percussion music and established new musical standards that originated new directions in art. He brought a revolution in the technique of playing Nagara, thus becoming the first rhythm composer in Azerbaijan. After 2000, I wrote about 1,500 rhythms. 1,056 of them are recorded on notes. They have a variety of sizes. There is a main line of rhythm in Azerbaijani music. Our rhythm of the Yolla dance sounds like this. Its size is 4 by 4. This is 6 by 8. We started to record the rhythms, like 9 and a half, 10 and a half, 4 by 24, 4 by 70, 4 by 36, 4 by 56, 4 by 58. I started to use ancient rhythms to create new ones, so I created new rhythms and I invented new types of nagara. I'm the author of 12 such instruments. This is a bass nagara, this is a circular nagara, and that is a meter high nagara, that is a two meter nagara. We are the only owners of them, as I myself created them. There is also Shibuki Nagora, which has no analogs. There's the regular pair, and that's the bass. I also restored the clay Nagora that existed 4,000 years ago. This Nagara's weight is up to 15 kilograms, and usually Nagara weights up to 2 kilograms. And this instrument is heavier than the usual one. I put a light inside it. The lamp heats the membrane, and it has a completely different sound. Here is the usual sound of this. But on this one, it allows you to get unusual sounds. Here the membrane is made of goat skin. Therefore, you can get a more different sound than on a regular nagora. I use these gestures in performance, because if you play it as usual, tapping on the sides, then you will not get the desired sound.
God created the first beautiful rhythms. It's the baby's heartbeat in the womb. Without those beats, we wouldn't know if a baby is alive. It's the rhythm of life. Without understanding this, it's impossible to feel other people, the world and science around us. Everything is relative, of course. You can know everything. In my opinion, you need to understand the world of feelings and have a scientific knowledge. Here, listen to the sounds. You need to feel the sounds. That's one. I'm starting to figure out the scientific side. It's one thing to hear it, to feel it. Everyone can say that. But from a scientific point of view, one, this sound, two, this sound, three is, and four is, this is the scientific and central sides. Ve o şahlara her bir diyorsan burada dört tane de bir insan var iki tane de alave varım altı insana ben bunu bölürüm. The membrane of the Nagara is made of a cow skin. Back is made of capron. You can play it with sticks and hands. It has such an impressive sound. And this is a kind of cos nagara. It's got a little bit more diameter. You can play with sticks. This is a big nagara. Several people can play it. You get an interesting sound. And the rhythm is more harmonious. Bunun e, ayak arası olduğu kimi o? Bu, bu var bu. Çünkü bu I did this one too. I created them because classical nagara does not make the sounds. The stool is designed to accompany the main sounds in band's performance. Bestekarlık anlamını getirdim ben. We designed this Nagara in 2018. Its height is 2 meters. There is no such Nagara anywhere. Maybe, of course, in Africa. For example, there are big drums. But in the art of Nagara, there is just one such instrument. Its membrane is made of special plastic. This is Gavodash Nagara stone. These stones are in ancient Gabustan. Of course, they're very big. You can move them. So I ordered a prototype that makes exactly that sound. The next story was prepared by our colleagues from Tashkent. They decided to introduce you to the musical instrument to which classical poets such as Rudaki, Anwari, Hafiz, Hiloli and others dedicated their poems and rubais. Musical instruments are an integral part of the centuries-old culture of the Uzbek people. 
Their history is incredibly rich and diverse. And nowadays, not a single celebration in the country takes place without them. Today, we will talk about the sultan among musical instruments in the Near and Middle East. It's tambour. And in order to get as much information as possible about it, we decided to contact the famous Uzbek folk song writer Omas Olobirganov. Uh, the instrument I'm holding in my hands is a tambour. This instrument is closely related to the history of Uzbekistan and takes a prominent place in our cultural heritage. So tambour is a string instrument and has been widely used in the Near and Middle East since ancient times. It look reminds a lute. It can have two to seven strings. And it depends on the region and the historical period. Monuments of antiquity, written sources, miniatures and ancient photos confirm the ancient history of this treasure. Uh, Tambour has been known since the days of the Ashtar Hanids. It was developed during the Timurids. A pearl, Bukharash Ashmakom, is written to a tune of tambour. In the East, this musical instrument was called the king, the sultan, among musical instruments. It's known that the instrument was created by shepherds around the 15th century. Its strings were made of the guts of animals. Later, thanks to the development of trade along the Silk Road, strings were made of rolled silk. In some versions of modern strings, silk or nylon are used also. The strings used to be made of silk because there was no technology, but it used to be very quiet. There were no cars, no factories, and a sound got to its listener. Then the strings began to be made of silver. Today's strings are made of iron and various alloys. For this reason, there is a special tool made of metal. This is nohun, which is translated from Farsi as a nail. Previously, when the strings were made of silk, the musicians played it with a nail. The musicians now use a nohun, which is placed on the first finger of the right hand. Central Asian tanbur typically has a length of between 100 and 130 centimeters, a pear-shaped resonator, and a strongly elongated neck with a fret board. The instrument has 14 19 boards, some of which are mobile, and some wooden ones are glued to the deck. The tumble range is three octaves, and the scale is connected with a Makamat tonal system. In Uzbekistan, tambour is very popular. It's hard to imagine the cultural life of the country without it. And you can list a lot of names for whom it was the meaning of life. These, of course, are Sultan Khon Hakimov, Maksud Huja Yusupov, Yukup Davidov, Asad Kuri Lutfulayev, Maruf Huja Tushpulatov, the national legend of music, Professor Turgun Alimatov, and many others. Of course, it makes sense to tell why this instrument was called a tambour. Tan is a soul and bor is tremor. And it's true. When a musician takes a tambour and begins to play some melody, from the very first notes it can excite any soul. And probably, therefore, they say that of all the musical instruments inherited by the Uzbek people from their ancestors, tambour is famous for its magic and genuine charm.
That's all for today. You have watched Colors of Asia. You can enjoy other episodes of our program on the website of Kazakh TV channel and on its official YouTube page. See you next time.